Record numbers of rhinos are being poached and killed in South Africa for their horns. Hundreds of them have been shot by Vietnamese hunters. Lần đầu tiên thì mình nhìn thấy một con vật lớn nó bị chết. And the horns sold illegally in Vietnam. Và cần phải nghiêm trị và tôi không chấp nhận những người Việt Nam mà gây ra những cái tội ác này. The horn is made of keratin, the same material as fingernails. And yet many people in Vietnam believe it can cure life-threatening illnesses. It's illegal to trade in rhino horn in Vietnam, and yet I find people here keen to sell it to me. And how much does it cost? With the Vietnamese getting richer, the trade is likely to boom, and the African rhino could face extinction. Early morning in Hanoi and the daily laughing yoga session. People here have plenty to be happy about. <laughs> After a half century of war, first against their former colonizers, the French, and then against capitalism in the shape of the Americans, the Socialist Republic of Vietnam is now one of the fastest growing economies in Asia. The Vietnamese have no inhibition about shopping for the brand names of the erstwhile enemy. The wealthy classes here spent over 15 billion dollars on luxury goods last year. One of the most sought-after luxury goods in Vietnam today is more exclusive than a Rolex and more expensive than gold. It's rhino horn. I've been given official permission to report on the rhino horn trade here and go looking for the item on traditional Chinese medicine street, the best place, I'm told, to buy rhino horn in Hanoi. Vietnam signed up to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species 20 years ago. And the poster here warns that the trade is now illegal. The Vietnam government keeps a close eye on journalists, and with my government minder looking on, I don't have much luck. Do you sell any rhino horn? Does anyone sell rhino horn products on the street? That evening, I slip away from my minder and go shopping with a hidden camera. I find the illegal traders have no such inhibitions, like the one I'm directed to in the back of a tailor's shop. And how much are you charging? This is about 125 Rhino horn is expensive because it's difficult to get hold of and because of the widely held belief in its medicinal power. I tell the trader I'm looking for a cancer cure for my husband. He tells me he has several of these horns in stock. They're from the Asian rhino, he says, which have been hunted out of existence in Vietnam. I make my excuses and leave, explaining that it's out of my price range. For centuries, people in Vietnam and other countries in Asia have believed in the power of the rhino horn, although biologists tell us 
It's made of the same material as the human fingernail. Oh, you have this. This is the, um, the horn. I was only in Vietnam a few days, but when the word got around that I wanted to buy rhino horn, people contact me, offering to sell. This time, the trader says it's from Africa. How do you know? Yeah, someone came from South Africa to bring it back. He turns out to be particularly obliging, even coming up to my hotel room to show me how to prepare it. Em là đúng ra em đi về luôn rồi, em không quay xuống đâu. Ừ. Nhưng mà do là nghe chồng của chị á, là bị ung thư tiết điện liệt. The essential item, he explains, is a bowl with a corrugated surface on which to grind the horn and then mix it with water or alcohol to drink. I go to the village outside Hanoi, renowned for ceramics, where the bowls are made. They're not on open display and a local takes me through the back streets to find them. The woman at the wheel tells me that she makes, on average, 200 bowls for grinding rhino horn a day. That's some 60,000 bowls a year from one pottery alone. In the nearby shop at the back, they're stacked high for future users. It's hard to estimate how many bowls are being sold or indeed how many people are using rhino horn in Vietnam, but it's enough to have a catastrophic effect in Africa. Tran Dung Trung, director of Hanoi Zoo, tells me that he had to go to South Africa a few years ago to collect rhino to bring to Vietnam, to remind people what they've lost. The only rhino to be found in Vietnam today is here in the zoo, and it's the African white. He blames the misguided belief in the medicinal power of the horn do cái nhu cầu à, về vấn đề hiện nay có một số người ở cái khu vực à, các cái nước à, à, châu Á thì có cái 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 suy nghĩ là sử dụng cái sừng tê giác để mà điều trị một số các cái bệnh nan y à, chính từ cái đó cho nên cái giá trị sừng tê giác nó 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 càng ngày nó càng có giá trị và cái sử dụng cái vấn đề sử dụng của cái người châu Á như vậy cho nên là nó làm cho cái con tê giác Java của chúng ta cho đến hôm nay thì coi như là à, như là tuyệt chủng. But environmental organizations are now saying that the poaching of hundreds of rhino for their horns in Africa could also bring the white rhino to the point of extinction. Mr. Chong, many people blame the Vietnamese appetite for the rhino horn for scenes like this in Africa. Đối với tôi mà làm trong cái ngành động vật hoang dã này, đối với tôi thì với cái cảnh tượng này thì này là một cái tội ác và cần phải nghiêm trị. Và tôi không chấp nhận những cái người Việt Nam mà gây ra những cái tội ác này. So how did it happen that the Vietnamese are being blamed for threatening the very survival of this majestic animal? Most of the rhinos in the wild live in South Africa today. Threatened with extinction 30 years ago, they've made a recovery. Although the black rhino is still considered endangered, and the white rhino remains in the threatened category. Nonetheless, rhino hunting is permitted under strict rules. Fewer than a hundred experienced hunters can apply for a permit every year to shoot just one rhino. And they're required to keep the horn intact as a trophy. 
The argument is that hunting encourages privately owned rhino parks and therefore adds to rhino numbers. Permits costing tens of thousands of dollars contribute to the local economy. With no more rhino left to hunt in their own country, Vietnamese hunters started applying for South African permits 10 years ago. By 2010, there were more Vietnamese applying to shoot a rhino in South Africa than any other nationality. Lúc đầu họ chỉ bắn vì vì sự tò mò. Sau đó là bắn có lẽ vì một chút tiền. Thế rồi thì cuộc sống nó cứ đẩy dần lên, không biết tại sao là cái giá nó cứ tăng vọt lên thì nó trở thành động cơ kiếm tiền của một nhóm nào đó. Mr. Dung, a wealthy businessman, joined a hunt in South Africa six years ago, something he says he now regrets. He and his friends didn't know how to shoot. Mortally wounded, the rhino limped off. It took three days to find, ten kilometers away. Thì đến ngày thứ ba, thì họ phải thuê một chiếc máy bay trực thăng. Và khi tìm thấy xác con tê giác, thì chúng tôi đi theo chiếc xe Tôi không, cái cảm xúc thì nó không rõ ràng, bởi vì đó là lần đầu tiên. Lần đầu tiên thì mình nhìn thấy một con vật lớn, nó bị chết. So he took a long time to die? Yeah, maybe, maybe too long time. What happened up until then was legal. What followed was not, although Mr. Dung appeared quite happy to talk about it. Chúng tôi mua một cái cưa sắt nhỏ như này. Sau đó về thì trải cái dây báo ra. Trải dây báo ra sau đó thì dùng cưa. Cưa cắt từng khúc, đầu tiên cắt cái phần ngọn này. Xong cắt từng khoanh, từng khoanh. Sau đó lại cắt nhỏ, cắt nhỏ ra. Cắt mất mấy ngày rời như vậy. How much money did the rhino horn make after it was cut up? Ờ, có lẽ là họ kiếm được khoảng độ 25.000 đô la sau khi cái cái sừng tê giác được cắt ra thành từng miếng. And who is it sold to? Vietnamese hunters were killing the rhino for the horn and selling it illegally. When the Vietnamese had used their permits, non-Vietnamese, including Thai bar girls, were paid to fly to South Africa to pose as hunters and South African marksmen did the shooting also against the rules. In a series of trials in South Africa, it became clear that Asian criminal gangs were involved. In 2012, South Africa refused to give any more permits to applicants from Vietnam. The gangs have now turned from paying pseudo-hunters to poaching on a huge scale. In the two years since the ban on Vietnamese hunters, record numbers of rhino have been poached in South Africa, killed for their horn. So death, sometimes their recovery depends on... Much of the data on rhino horn in Vietnam has been collected by the respected wildlife monitoring network, Traffic, here in Hanoi. They fear the situation could get worse. Recently, they conducted a survey in which 60% of the people asked said they wanted to acquire rhino horn. What we found was an alarming number of people who aren't currently consuming rhino horn, but if they had the economic ability, the money, the dispo disposable income, I guess you'd call it, to do so, they would and they want to. And they've already decided that, even though they know perhaps that it's illegal or they're aware of the situation, they've already made a conscious decision. So there is a market for it, and for those who have the money, it is readily available. Some of the rhino horn being sold is fake, and so on my next unofficial shopping expedition, I ask for proof. This time I say I'm looking for a hangover cure, and Mr. Wynne, who tells me he's a traditional medicine doctor, 
offers me a big slice of rhino horn. The price is the same as before. And how much does it cost? He offers a list of complaints that rhino horn can apparently cure other than cancer. And how come you can sell it openly? Is it legal to sell rhino horn in Vietnam? The hunting permit he shows me appears to be in order. Right rhino horn from South Africa, yeah. Sure. You said you could take two. It turns out that it was a family affair. His wife went on the hunt with him, and there's a picture of his eight-year-old son standing beside a dead rhino. And he shows me the permit to import the rhino horn, approved by CITES. This says Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, because it's a hunting trophy. Except that the rules clearly state that the hunting trophy, the horn, must be kept intact in the possession of the hunter and not under any circumstances sold. A recent investigation by CITES into 40 permit-holding Vietnamese hunters revealed that only seven of them still had their trophy rhino horns intact. Back at traffic, they despair at the lack of official disapproval. Why is so little being done? In Vietnam at the moment, this trade is, is high profit, low risk. You might get a slap on the wrist if, if you're caught. They have no more rhinos, so why are rhinos their problem? because they don't see the demand from here as driving the problem. Are agencies like Customs making enough effort to seize the rhino horns? They do recognise they need to do more. I think they're doing, you know, a lot. I've seen changes in the last 12 months. I think that, you know, the, the couriers, the smugglers, the networks that run this kind of chain are always one step ahead of Customs and, you know, come up with new ways and new paths to get horns into the country. There's a culture here based on centuries-held beliefs that many outsiders find hard to comprehend. The consuming animal parts can produce startling results. At a restaurant, I'm offered a local delicacy. Freshly killed snake. Fellow diners aren't so squeamish. The snake bile mixed with alcohol is good for the digestion, this man says. And the blood, drunk while still warm, is good for improving the virility of men over 40. I didn't stop for lunch. And then there are Vietnam's so-called bear farms. Every six months, their bile is removed from the gallbladder with a tube. And are the bears okay living in the cages? It would be wrong to suggest that everyone in Vietnam is comfortable with this sort of treatment of animals. The local campaigning group, Education for Nature, 
have sent letters to hundreds of wealthy businessmen who, they fear, look on rhino horn as a symbol of prestige. They've pleaded with them not to use it. We think that people use it for, the, for their status. People think that yeah, when they use the rhino horn, it, it's so that they are wealthy, they are successful. And they've transmitted shocking and graphic adverts on over half the country's 50 TV channels. We've blurred this picture of a rhino still alive after its horn and much of its face were cut off. Không có người mua, thì không có sự tàn sát. The message is dramatic and uncompromising. They were, however, surprised by one complaint they received. And we get some complaints from the government officer that our public service announcement is too negative. I think that's because, yeah, that's a, because a lot of strong words about the rhino horn consumer. But that's what we want. We want to outcast the rhino horn consumer. Is there the will at the top to stamp out the trade? While I'm in Vietnam, I hear rumors that some of the country's most prominent politicians are using rhino horn. I had no way of following up on the rumor because no senior politician would talk to me. Five weeks earlier from London, I'd asked to speak to relevant members of the government, whose job, I'd been told, is to stamp out the illegal trade in rhino horn. But I'm informed none are available to see me. The only government official I'm allowed to talk to is the man responsible for getting the government to abide by the conventions on the international trade in endangered species. Mr. Doe. Yes. I put it to Mr. Doe that CITES had asked Vietnam to introduce new laws to stop hunters selling their horns two years ago. In order to prepare any regulation or law, you cannot make it in one year. It takes time, you know. Why has it taken you so long? Yeah, we, we have did uh, draft our regulation already, but it's the, because the, now we've got the to, deal, to, to dealing with this issue, we need international cooperation, you know, and especially we need to get some more the, uh, experience and also especially some of the, 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 the information and resources from other countries to see what are they doing. People say that the rhino horn trade here in Vietnam is high profit, low risk. The fines are simply not appropriate. But now it's the, we, we are now, maybe next, within this month, we'll issue another uh, regulation that the, all of the, the, the offenders who are involved in the rhino horn with the more than 100 gram up should be the criminal, treated as a criminal and in jail. Vietnam has been importing rhino horn for almost 10 years now. Can you put your hand on your heart and say that Vietnam is trying to stop the illegal trade in rhino horn? Yeah, of course, yeah. we, we, we are committed to working on that it's, since Vietnam to uh, join to the, the CITES. So the government already is committed to working with the uh, CITES and also the doing whatever is the, in order to stop the wildlife trade. But clearly, it's not enough. In South Africa, they have recently published the figure for rhinos poached last year over a thousand, a 40% increase on the previous year, and the highest figure ever recorded. This is a, an incredibly high increase in poaching, and if it maintains even at this rate without increasing, you know, we're going to reach the tipping point for rhinos. You know, by the end of 2014, we'll start being, starting to be in the negative in terms of deaths and poaching, um, outstripping births and the population will start to decline very quickly for rhinos and some of them have already gone the the rhino in vietnam gone apart from rhinos that are bought from africa and, and placed in zoos i refuse to accept that we could live in a world where my nephews and my niece 
we'll only see rhinos in a zoo. We have to stop thinking the way we have been thinking for, for so long as conservationists. We, it's not about, you know, conserving the animal, it's about changing people's behaviour and acceptance and, and their sense of responsibility, their sense of ownership of these animals. We live in a global world and, and we are all responsible for the animals that inhabit that globe with us as far as I'm concerned. Enough rhino horn is being traded and consumed in Vietnam to sound the alarm bells of extinction for the African white rhino. Procrastination is no longer an option, say the experts. Vietnam must take urgent action to put a stop to this bloody trade.